Airtable recently released conditional coloring or conditional formatting for number elements in your interface dashboard. That's what we're going to be covering today. I'm going to jump right into it and give the easy version of this. And then I'm going to jump into it afterwards and give a more complex and cooler, I think, example of it. So if you just want to know how to use it, I'll cover that first. If you want a really cool way to use it, stick around. My name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS. I help businesses of all sizes, literally all sizes, build systems just like this in their Airtable ecosystem all day long. So if you want help, check out the link in the description and we can get you some help building your Airtable. We're going to jump right in. So this is a content dashboard that I have in here. And we already have colors in here. These are set as background colors. So here's the number of posts that are that went active 30 to 60 days ago. Here's the number of posts that went active the last 30 days. Here's the number of posts planned for the next next 30 days. So if I come in here into the editor mode, what they changed is these can now be conditionally, you can make these conditional on something. So let's see, expand this and go into the editor mode. So up in the top left, I'm going to go click on the name of my interface and go into the editor mode and then shrink this back down. So what I started adding, my ultimate top goal eventually for the hard section of this was to come up with a percentage change, but I couldn't get a percentage change. So we're just going to go with a number change. But how this works is if I come in here into any of these number elements and I click on the color for this, well, before you could already set a background, set your color as the background color or not. I think it looks really good with the background color. If I come in here now, this is the new section. So this is if I add conditions. So now I can add conditions and say, if this number is greater than 10, be blue, otherwise be green. So if I had switched that to 13, it would be green because that's in the otherwise condition. So this is how you set this up. If you're like, Ben, this isn't showing up for me. My best guess is you may have an older version of the dashboard. I haven't actually tested this on old versions of dashboards, but if you go add a new page, it needs to be using this dashboard right here is my guess. You may be using a blank canvas where I'll be honest, I don't know if it applies to those. If I jump back in here, what I want to be showing is this is something I was just starting with. I wanted to show the, the number change. So my ultimate goal was to show here's the number of posts that went live 30 to 60 days ago. Here's the number that went live in the last 30 days ago. What percentage difference was this number versus this number? I could do that for one number, but with some more advanced filtering, it breaks that. So I also want to be able to click on the YouTube tab and see all these numbers change for YouTube. Or I want to click on LinkedIn and see these numbers change for LinkedIn. Same for email, Twitter, all of the above. So how we make this work is currently this number element is posting date is before 30 days ago, but it's after 60 days ago and it's live. This one is very similar. It is within the past 30 days and is live. This one right here is the number change. Now, this is a little bit trickier. The best way that I could come up with on how to do that is if we go to the data side, I'll show how I started doing this and we're going to finish it up. We're actually going to basically be starting from scratch, but I'm going to show you how I got to here. So on the data side, what we have is I just wanted to try to replicate this with some check boxes for filtering and try and I was really trying to hard, trying hard to come up with percents down here at the bottom. What we're going to need is actually, if we go back here to this, I know I have two categories. I have things that were posted 30 to 60 days ago and things that were posted 30 days ago. And I basically want to know the difference. I want to count the difference. And so if you looked at those numbers a second ago, there were 76 that had been posted in the last 30 days and 12 that had been posted in the 30 days prior to that. So the increase is 64. 
how I did that is not a very complex way to do it, but it's just basically saying based on these checkboxes. Now I would, most of the time, this is like a really common request that we get. So I'm going to show how to do this with a formula and without any of these checkboxes or anything like that. So there's some formulas that are date. So date time diff. Let's take the date time diff between the posting date and today. And I think I got this backwards. I swear I always get this backwards. Okay, so then we can use it in an if formula. And that, this is gonna be a little bit messy to start off. I'm just gonna start adding a few more formulas because it's easier to just see some of this sometimes. So we wanna say if calculation three, and actually we're gonna have two conditions here because we gotta think outside the filters I currently have applied to this. So if calculation three is greater than zero, and let's scroll down, and calculation three is less than or equal to, let's see, it looks like it's 31. Then we want to return the number one. And my goal is to replicate this change column here. So for this, I'm gonna say, just to check this out. Okay, so, so far so good. I didn't add any new records. This is still 76 and this is 12. Now my next piece in here, and at the end, this whole formula is gonna to come together. So just keep, keep on keeping on. And now we want to say, so if that wasn't true, let's copy this whole formula and after the comma, paste it in there. So now we're gonna say if it's greater than 31 and less than or equal to, and here this says 55, I'm gonna go with 60 to be safe, actually maybe 61, not 661, just 61. Uh, in that case, we need to return negative one. So if we return negative one, this now is 64. So to combine all of this into one formula, this is 30 versus 60 days. I can save that. What you want to do is you want to go into your calculation three formula and highlight everything in here and copy it. This is a formula trick. If I highlight this section of the formula, that's gonna get replaced and use command F. It opens this little box up, which I can then paste what I copied in here. And if I press this, it there's a little pop-up that says replace all. Uh, now it's gonna go replace all of those, which is what I want. So now this formula that I just added can stand alone without any of these fields. And I'm just gonna say dev at the beginning of this just to make it right. Okay, so now I have this formula ready to go. You have to have the formula to have the change in here. But if I come in here and add the change, I'm gonna say filter. Well, no filter there. That's not gonna change at all. Uh, other than deleting the date on here. So it does need to be live, but then I'm gonna summarize that field that I just added and I'm going to sum that field. So now you see this, what I like about this is it works across the filters. So if I come here, the difference between 12 and 76 is 64. The difference between three and 26 is 23. The difference between five and 13 is eight. Now, what I want to do is I want to make this conditionally colored. So if I jump into the color, now my ultimate dream would be to have this as a percent, but you can only win so many battles. So green is if this number increases. 
So if this number is greater than zero, we're good. And actually, let's say it's greater than five, then we're good. If we've posted five more posts than the previous 30 days, then we're continually increasing. If it's greater than zero, it'll be yellow. And if otherwise, we're going to say it's red. So if I go publish this now, I don't think I, oh, here's a good example. So this one has only increased two. So it's yellow. Twitter has increased 26. So it's in the green. Email has increased five. So it's yellow. So there's no reds, but now this is a good like visual indicator of performance. Again, you could do, you could make this work with a percent if you only wanted it to work on one tab. I could show you if you want to see that. It's a little bit more complex, but I'm happy to show you. Uh, I guess add a comment in the comment section if you do want to see how to make this a percent instead of a number. But yeah. This is how you do conditional formatting on numbers in Airtable interfaces. If you want to go into more conditional formatting in Airtable and you want to say, let's say, look at conditional visibility of fields in a detail page on a record, check out the video here in the end screen and I'm going to go right through that. So click on the video in the end screen. It's going to be how to conditionally change, conditionally view editable and read only fields in the detail page in an interface. So go check out the video on the end screen. Just click the thing in the middle of the video right now, and I'll see you in the next one.